Hello everybody, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're in our little crafty workshop and we've got a really cool little um, little project for you guys to have a go at. Um, this is, uh, we call, what I'm calling a scroll saw shelf. Okay, I've been struggling with that this week. Um, it's too many S's like seashells, seashells, seashells on the seashore. <laughs> but yeah, a scroll saw shelf. Um, and I've kind of kept it quite kind of loose. Um, I've, I've given you um, a little uh, template that we're going to work to, um, but there's no reason why you can't kind of um, take that on as your own and make different shapes on it and things like that. So we've got a fairly basic uh, project, um, but like I say, it's a really good chance to kind of make it your own, do it your own style, uh, put your own kind of spin on it. Um, so yeah, let's show you the shelf first. I've got my, um, let's go over to the bench here. Um, this is the, the, the shelf. It's, um, we've got a bit of piercing going on and the bracket on the side, it's kind of like a, a organic kind of tree branch shape. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing. And like I say, you can make this shape, whatever you like on the ends, you can do whatever piercing you like. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of talk about that as we go through. Here's the template I'm using. You can see, um, it's the same as our, uh, bracket. Okay, or well, very slightly different. I changed it ever so slightly. Um, but first job, I'm going to stick that onto our um, onto our bit of tulip. Bit of tulip there. That's um, 100 mil wide. Okay, and again, you could make that wider if you wanted. This is just a little small display shelf that I'm I'm doing today. Um, but if you've got the time, you can you know make it bigger. Um, however however big you want to make it. Both the shelf and the brackets are 100 mil. So I've got two planks the same. I've just marked this up. I'm going to cut those out later. Um, but that's going to be the actual shelf. And I'm going to cut the brackets out of this one. So there's our template. I'm just aligning it to the side of the board here. And I'm going to stick a bit of glue on the back and we can get cut in. Let me get this bit. We'll use this as a scrap so I don't get glue on my bench. A nice thin layer of this, uh, this glue. And that's going to stick straight down onto our piece of timber. And again, you could mark this out different ways. You could lay your template on top of your piece of timber. Use a bit of something like uh, like this black carbon paper to transfer things on. Um, yeah, so there's there's different ways of doing this. I quite like this way. It's nice and quick and easy. Uh, quick results. So when you're not watching me kind of trace while we're in the middle of our demo. So let's get that aligned to the uh, corner of the board there. And I'm just bringing it over this way. We want to make sure that detail is caught on the edge. So I'm just shifting it this way a little bit. Make sure we get that in. And just trying to keep it square down this edge. Good. So that's our template down. Um, so quite easy. We need to drill a hole through here so we can thread our um, scroll saw blade through it in a moment. Um, so let's just bring a little bit of scrap across. Pop that down on the bench. And that way when I drill through, we've got that support on the back of the board so we're not breaking out, um, but also we're not drilling straight into our bench. I'm going to go up in the corner here. And we've gone through, just having a quick check of that. We've gone right the way through. So over to the scroll saw. Um, need your eye protection if you're going to um, be doing anything like this. Um, there's not little chips. There's no little bits we're cutting out of this, but always better safe than sorry. Um, Pop that there. I'm going to pop the extractor on. 
So it's a little noisy, but you should still hear what I'm saying. Um, first of all, we're going to undo the arm here and just lift that up. And I'm just going to thread that through our hole that we drilled. Um, joining us here today, we've got Colin on the questions. Craig's on our cameras. Um, so if you have any questions, please just ask them in the chat. Scroll saw on. And we're just going to start to cut our little, um, our little design. I'm bringing that blow in, you see we've got this dust building up. It's kind of hiding what I can see. So I'm engage that little blower. I've got a brand new number five modified geometry blade in here. And it's just cutting really nicely. Nice long straight line here. We're going to be a little bit careful. We're going to take it right up to this corner. I'm going to back out and touch and swing it round and pick up on that other one that's at 90 degrees. Happen to shift my body back a little so the um, can swing this flank around. It's not getting stuck on my belly. And these scroll saws, really they're meant for cutting really tight curves and things like that. Um, and when you're cutting a straight line, you have to constantly make little micro adjustments. I'm going to cut right the way along here as a straight line, so all of these tops of the branches are as straight as possible. Because that's what our shelf is going to be sat on. Cutting on the line where I can. And what I think I'm going to do is just join up to our hole that we cut. I'm going to turn the machine off and just drop that little section out. So you can hear the extractor whistling through the table there. I've actually drilled a few holes in the extraction port to reduce some of that suction because sometimes it will really pull the workpiece um, down onto the table, make it difficult to move. Um, so a little um, couple of holes in the extraction pipe there, and that's given me a bit more freedom of movement. So just checking my tension there, resting the blade up on the side of the um, project there. It's not actually cutting until we get to that section we're going to cut into sometimes when you start a cut next to a flat you've already made you'll get like a little line but we can come back and sort that out with um with a different tool i'm going to trim off all these little corners sorry i went the long way around And by doing that, by cutting up to the line, then sweeping out from the corner, and then coming back and cut it, you'll get a much cleaner, squarer corner. And take these little sections out. And they should just pop out. Oops. Looks like my blade just let go there. Haven't done it up tight enough. Let's back that one off. Get that in there. Give it an extra little pinch. 
and we're back in business. Again, where that blade came loose, then I've got a little wobble on, but we can come back to that with um, with a file or some abrasive and um, and just drift that out. Just trying to get rid of these little pits. With the machine off, I can just dig around in there, get them out. Because what they can do is sit in the little extraction plate underneath and stop you from moving this around. So, Sneak in here. And we're just following our lines at the moment. Good. So let's just back out of there and we can start here. Nice gentle pressure down on the table. We're not pushing so hard that we can't move it, but we want to stop it from lifting back up. And again, I want this corner nice and sharp, so rather than try and swing it round, I'm going to backtrack up through my cut. Getting caught on something there, and then come from the other direction, and that'll give us a lot more definition down in that bottom corner. This is a really quick project to make, um, really nice little decorative object at the end of it. So I'm just putting those loose bits to one side for now. Now we just need to cut this external uh, line. So that can drop back down. We don't need to go through the project again. Um, just going to bring that arm um, down a bit. Get a bit more of that blade. I didn't have much of it in the clamp. So I'm just bringing that down so we've got a little bit more to clamp onto. And then away we go. So through bringing the arm down, my hold down clamp came with it. So I'm bringing that back up. Just making sure everything's nice and tight. Hold down clamps coming up and we need to be able to swing our project 360 degrees around it. So a little cut there. That one side can square up on that top corner where it's just uh, planked and machined already. I'm going to cut in here. And then across this long straight again. And I pull off the line a little bit there, but I'm trying to keep it consistent all the way along rather than taking multiple goes at that corner.
So it's about a millimeter off, but it's consistent. Take that away from behind. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick up that line just on the side there. And we've got this nice long sweeping curve. Again, with these nice kind of organic curvy shapes, you can get away with um, drifting off the line a little bit. If you've got something a bit more geometric, straight lines and hard angles, just take a little bit more time and care. Good, so that's our first bracket. If we come back over to the bench here, um, you know, rather than use another square corner, we can tuck this up in here and get the best use out of our piece of timber. Okay, gonna be a bit more frugal and, and use um, that bit that's already got that shape missing. Okay, so we've got our first question. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, so yeah, a few questions here, Ben. We've got, um, first of all, uh, from woodwork learning just like to know what sort of thickness you recommend for a more craft machine um and what is the thickness of the timber that you're using there so good question this is 18 mil and i would probably stick i wouldn't go much below that um because we're going to use because these are brackets they're going to be fixed to the wall um, and what we need to do is have either a good fixing point so we might have a, a screw through here sorry let's actually bring it down onto the the bench here so we need um, we need a bit of material um, in thickness because we, we might want to fix a screw through here or here, um, you know, and, and we need that material there to, you know, so it doesn't split or, um, or, or something similar. So this is, is 18 mil. That's about as thin as I'd like to go for the brackets. Um, the shelf, you can have whatever thickness you like. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. We just need to consider this kind of aperture if you're making it thinner. Obviously, this needs to be a bit smaller as well. Okay, um, but for the craft machines, that you know, the, you've got up to a fifty mil uh, capacity. Um, but for for a little shelf, you know, fifty mils way overkill. Um, just yeah, round about the eighteen. Um, you know, but but the shelf itself could be be a lot thinner if you wanted it to, or if you're trying to use up scraps and bits and bobs around the workshop. Um, and just one more, this is an observation by Robert. He's saying that um, if the hose on the blower was made a little bit longer, it could um, blow the dust away from the user. But looking yep. at that, it looks as though it could be. Absolutely, yeah. I, you could bring that right forward and get that kind of backwards blowing action. Okay, so that's blowing it away from you. Um, I you would usually have it like that. Sometimes it, it kind of hampers where your hand's going to be. And things like that. Um, so, bringing it back here, um, I just just feel it's it's kind of shooting off to the side. And with that extraction, it's actually pulling from the bottom of the machine as well. So there's, um, I, you know, I can't smell any airborne dust in here, um, dust masks and things like that as well. Um, but yeah, don't don't have it behind the blade like that, where it's going to be kind of shooting straight towards you and kind of swirling up in the in the, in the um, airborne dust. Um, I usually have it off to the side like that, just to clear the um, the sight line, really. Okay, another question. And the last one, well, actually, um, this is from Frederick, but it's a question for me, if you don't mind. Yeah, not um, at all. It, it just been watching the uh, finishes um, uh, stream that we've done a few weeks back, and just wondered if drying or force drying the finish with a hair dryer will um, uh, make a difference to the outcome. Um, firstly, Frederick, it wasn't a hairdryer, it was a craft dryer. Hair dryers are too powerful and they uh, generate too much volume of air. 
Um, and no, it doesn't make a difference because it's a gentle um, drying action. It's warm, not hot. Um, so no, you'll be absolutely fine. All you're doing is evaporating the, uh, the thinners that are in the, the uh, finish. That's it. Good stuff. Thanks, Colin. On that note, I used the heat gun to try and speed something up the other day, and it changed the color of it. So, um, you know, be careful of stuff like that. It was a, it was a kind of a metallic uh, paste. and um, uh, Sorry, a metallic paint. Um, and then I put some paste on it, and I thought, no, sorry, I wanted to put the paste on it, but that was the next stage. And I was being um, a little bit, um, you know, my patience wasn't there. So I rushed it along, and it actually changed the color of the metallic paint. So always do a little test patch, things like that. And you'll be away. Sorry, what I did here, um, I just want to get this aligned, something similar to what I've got on this one because I missed the edge. I did my um, template just a touch too big. So I'm just trying to put my template I've just cut on top of the um, paper template, and then I can align the edge of that to the side. I'm going to put a little fold down the side there. And then that's our alignment. Because we want to keep it as, as um, flat and straight as possible. Or as near to the other one as possible. They want to be a, a matching pair, really. So more glue. Nice and quick and easy. And thanks for your questions, guys. We really, they really keep us going here. Um, and nice to hear what you guys are doing at home. But there's nothing on this scroll saw you couldn't do on the craft scroll saw. Just going back to uh, Woodwork Learner's uh, question, they, um, you know, they've got the same capacity. They've got this, you know, the same kind of movement and things like that. Um, there's nothing you could do on this saw that you couldn't do on the um, on the craft version. So I'm just eyeballing that little crease we had. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We've got other tools we can revisit this with. So template on. And we're just gonna whiz around that. Nice and quick this time. So just check my tension, tractor's going on, and we'll whiz through this one. Goggles on, and away we go. My blower working. And just coming back in this one, and I'm going to join that just so I can get rid of this top bit of timber. Whenever you're coming to an end of cut or you've got two intersecting cuts, just back off the pressure a little bit and allow it to cut its way out. We don't want to kind of ping through this part of the board and into our um, project. Same idea here. We want to come up to our line and then just slow it down and sometimes the blade will just travel forward that last bit by itself because of the pressure that we put on the blade. So I've wandered off a little bit there so I'm trying to get the side of the seat to engage. Get back to that nice straight cut. And I should have drilled a hole in this a minute ago. So we'll do that in just a second.
So, nice long sweeping curves. Using both hands to kind of guide and twist it now. And then it starts to go the other direction. Again, with the sole saw and with a bit of practice, I'm happy to put my thumb that close to the blade. Certainly wouldn't be doing that on any other machine, really. And again, just nice and slow on that exit. We don't want to break out fibers or um, anything like that. So quickly drill a hole. And then we'll be back on the scroll saw. Okay. So just drilling a hole down through our template here. Sometimes this glue wraps itself around the drill bit. It's a real pain, this copy dex glue, because um, it sticks together it's, um, so much. You can see a little strand of it coming out here, and sometimes that will carry on. It wraps around the drill bit. It can be a real pain. Um, so it just be a, a case of picking it out if that happens. Quite did that up tight. So again, we've got this little internal shape. Um, and you could make this any kind of shape you want. If we come back over to the bench, and there's a couple of examples here. This, so this is the kind of bare bones of the, um, of the template there. You've got a bit where we can put a screw in at the top, a bit where we can put the screw in at the bottom, and this is the little aperture where the, um, the shelf's going to sit. All of this area here could be anything you want. We've gone with this kind of branch shape, um, but you could do um, some leaves. Um, you could do um, that's more of a kind of a, a kind of craggy tree with a little owl in a um, in a hole. Um, but like I say, you could do whatever shape you like for these um, for these. Um, and it's nice to tie it into the um, to the. Uh, whatever you're doing on the actual shelf itself. So I've gone with like kind of branches for the brackets and then leaves on the, on the shelf. But you could have, you know, whatever you want, really. You could have um, leaves as the brackets and then bugs crawling across the top or, you know, you know, really make it your own. Just going to check my tension before we get going. That's good. And I'm going to pick up on that straight line there. Down into that corner, and then we're backtracking out. Back up to my little drill hole. We come down the other way. Again, slowing down at the end of the cut. And you should see that little kind of tip just move out by itself. I'm going to do these at the triangle first. This time. All those kind of relief cuts. Um, and then let's take this long straight along here. And again, as long as we cut this all out, there's no order of work. You do it however you like. That checking up, cutting that corner, and again come back and revisit that. And take out that little bit. So around we go. Oops, just picked up then where I shifted my grip. Much better. Along on top of these branches. Just 
Just drift it off a little bit there. So backtracking. Engaging the blade. Get it cutting. And back down onto our line. Uh, keep going. And take the top of that one off too. Good. So I'm just going to um, lift this up a moment. Get rid of these bits. And then we've got a bit more room to kind of swing the project around without having to think about cutting into any of those other faces. Again, just coming up, laying the side of the blade on the project and just gently nibbling it away until the see it taking the material and forming a shoulder and then you're in your cut. So just going to get rid of this, it's sitting right by the blade. Always turn the machine off if you're fishing for things down in there. Now I'm going to rest that on the back of the blade and just pick up on that nice straight line. And just give that one out. And these are, this is what the kind of salt is all about, these kind of curves. There's not many tools that will cut such a tight curve. There we go. That's our two brackets. Let's pop the extractor off so we can hear what we're doing. That's our two brackets. All done. And what was that? Half an hour. So we're half an hour in. We've got two brackets of a shelf cut. So it's really quick and easy project. Um, you know, you can rattle these out um, and do them all different styles and things like that. Okay, so another question. Yeah, Frederick's asking if the d designs can be downloaded at all on the website or... Um, so this one I've drawn up myself, but absolutely, we'll get them scanned in. Um, we'll give you that kind of plain one and my kind of version of. Um, um, so if you email that into our woodworking wisdom um, at axminster.com, um, I'll get that to you, Frederick. Absolutely. Um, and another question here for me from David. Just asking if machine wax is good to use around um, friction drives, so the ring on friction drive. I would leave wax alone because the whole um, the whole point of a friction drive, it creates a nice lot of friction. So um, anything impedes that, and then you're not going to get that drive. So no, not on this, not in this case. Good stuff. Nice to see the wood turners tuning in for a bit of scroll sawing. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what I've done here, if we have a little look on our bench. Um, I've just marked off uh, where we're going to um, put that in. And where I marked it up on the template, this was 20 mil here. 
So all I've done is drawn a little um, square 20 mil in, and then we're 18 mil thickness. Okay, so that line there is 18, and that line there is 20. And on the front, we've got a 10. We've just noticed a bit, I haven't cut out, we'll get that in a moment. Um, a 10 and the, um, and the thickness there, the 18. Um, and you can see how that's going to kind of line up to that little aperture um, and and kind of slot in there. Okay. And again, you can make these longer if you wanted to bring that out and you could cut patterns in the end. Um, if I show you the one that I did uh, before, I, did, I didn't like it, so I cut them off. Um, but it's, it's an extra idea. It's something else to be thinking on. So that was like that. Um, and I actually had that kind of 10 coming out the end there with some leaves on. I was just kind of experimenting. Um, but I decided I didn't like it in the end, so I chopped it off. All right. But absolutely, that's another thing you could do. You could um, extend it that way, um, uh, you know, make it a bit more decorative. Just another little idea. So what we're doing, we're cutting out our shelf. To be honest, in here, I would probably whiz that on the bandsaw. Um, we would probably get your lines a little bit straighter, um, a little bit more accuracy. But we're working on one machine today, so let's crack on with our scroll saw. We'll cut them out, and um, yeah. But yeah, on the bandsaw, that would take seconds. But, you know, we're spoiled rotten in here. We've got all the machines. Um, Likely at home, um, before I got my band saw, I would have just had my scroll saw. I would have done all of this definitely um, on the saw, on the scroll saw, sorry. So, extractor's going on. We're checking our tension. And away we go. So, these long straight lines, I'm not sure if I've said before, um, it's a bit like driving a car. Um, even though, you know, if you're driving down a... a absolutely straight road um, you're still making little micro adjustments to the steering wheel and it's the same with the scroll soil um, you know it, it doesn't really like cutting perfectly straight lines so you have to kind of compensate for that by making those tiny little adjustments and they are tiny I've got two lines here, so I'm going to have a quick measure, get my rule. And it should be 20 there. Yeah, so it's the outside line. Always worth double checking that. Now, I'm not sure if it's picking it up on, you can't really see it on camera, but I fed that in, that's a perfectly straight line, a cup um, drawn with a square. And actually, I'm feeding the work piece in at a slight angle because the, the blade is, is um, just slightly wandering off to the side. And there we go. That time using this finger almost like a little pivot point. One finger on top, a bit like a snooker or pull cue. Oops. 
Good. So that's our shelf shape. Now with a bit of luck, it's going to fit straight onto our um, straight into there. Okay, so Lady Luck is with us. Got a little bit of an overhang here. Let's um, let's come over to the bench actually, where I've put that on and where I messed up with my um, glue and my template on. I've got a very slight overhang there of probably about a couple of mil. Um, you could use a little block plane, something like that, just to trim that in. You could take it back to the saw and trim that off. All right. And again, we're coming over this side. And don't force it because we've got these little kind of branch sections. We don't want to kind of snap them off. And our grain direction is running up through here. Okay, so potentially these could break off. But you need to be a bit careful. Don't force it too much. So we've got a little step here as well. All part of it, we can go back and trim. Oh no, we've got a bit more to go there. Push that right in. That's better. Good. So that's the kind of um, the bare bones of our, our shelf. We've got our little kind of brackets on the end there. And that paper will just come off really easy with the, with the copy decks. If you can get it disassembled. Let's go the other side. Oh, that was a good fit. So bit by bit, just nudging them off using my thumbs get a bit of leverage oh that's really in there phew <laughs> okay all right so we've got another question there's a question but just to let you calm down whilst you're in um, playing that apart <laughs> just to um let you know that we have a lot of people watching from all over the world as well as our uk friends of course like frederick and john and, and all those guys and david we've got alejandro from um, argentina bob from north carolina we've got a robert from ontario and canada oh, wow um, and we've got an ed um just signed in from west coast of arizona so oh brilliant over watching you ben so welcome everybody um thanks for joining us today um, um no, carry on. I was just going to say, David's um, just asking, um, so what do you suggest to clean up the saw marks on the tree brackets? Oh, so we've got all sorts of little tools here. We're going to get to that in just a moment. We'll, we'll have a look. We've got some files. We've got some abrasives. Um, we'll check them out in just a sec. All right, we've got one more little, little bit of cutting to do. Um, Actually, where are we? We're quarter two at the moment. Let's ha let's concentrate on our brackets. Um, you can see what we've done there with our um, our piercing on the on the top shelf. Okay, and that's much the same. It's like any kind of pierce project. What I would say, um, the little uh, template that we've got um, to go on there. If I bring this in a bit closer, what we need to be careful of, and where I've just changed up the design ever so slightly is um, where this leaf overlaps there. Um, this is on this one. I've made it just a bit smaller, okay? Because um, if that line overlaps there, that whole piece will just fall out, okay? So you need to be a little bit careful. If, you know, we can pick nice designs like this, we need to make sure we, we just adapt them ever so slightly to, um, you know, so you're not having pieces of your uh, the middle of the shelf falling out because that will really ruin um you know the look of it if you can imagine that piece just knocked out um it's going to create a really strange shape here um on the on the actual shelf but much the same thing um as what we've been doing um you stick that down onto your shelf um drill a hole through and then it's just like any kind of pierce project, just like we've been cutting there, there's no difference. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll concentrate on those brackets, um, but you can see how that works and, and how the kind of um, organic shapes are working really nicely, um, you know, and they're kind of tying the piece together, all right? So let's have a little look at cleanup because I think that's quite important. We've got some um, quite, um tricky shapes in here so let's have a little 
um, tidy up. Um, got our paper on there. We can just pull that off. That's um, just that copied X glue comes off really nice and easy. And then we can bring in some other hand tools and to have a look. Now that modified geometry blade is gives you such a clean cut. Um, the finish of that is just lovely, straight off the saw. There's no sanding to do on this face whatsoever. Where you might need to just tidy it up is where we've had little changes of directions, perhaps where I've stopped um, to, to say something or um, you know, gone for a, a little bit. Um, you, you'll get like little lines and things like that, which we can clean up um, using a few different tools. So let's go for that flat, that big flat first, because we've got nice access to that. You could use a file. Okay, this is a bit of a big file for this job, but absolutely you could take that back and forth across that face um, and just tidy up any kind of uh, mucky bits in there. You can, what else have we got here? We've got a little sanding stick. Okay, so that is just a, a piece of abrasive uh, wrapped around something with a um, you know half round on it. That's really good. We've got that flat surface there. We can sand that up and around these curves. We can use that to take away any of those lines. Okay, and getting that little square on there. I'm just gonna have a quick play with the camera, folks. Just um, don't mind me. You'll uh, sorry, there we go. We're back in business. <laughs> sorry about that. There was a little square coming up, it's putting me off. So yeah, sorry, these, um, these little abrasives, you can work them around those curves, you know, make things super neat and tidy. If you wanted to, you could round all of this off so it looks even more organic, even more of that kind of um, round shape. Okay. Um, what else could we use? We could use just a bit of uh, cloth back abrasive wrapped around a pencil. Okay. That again is going to give you a nice curve to allow you into these kind of tricky areas. And again, just be a little bit gentle. Some of these may be a little bit short grained, so we're not putting tons of pressure on. We're just having a nice little clean up and that'll do a really good job. Um, files and rasps, again, you get these kind of um, the rounds on the, on the files. They're all gonna do much the same job coming down these kind of curves like this. Um, but actually the finish is so good off of that um, number five modified geometry um, that, you know, that's going to save you so much cleanup, so much of the breakout that you get from, um, you know, a, a standard um, blade. Um, that modified geometry with those up facing teeth um, cuts it from both sides up and down um, and you'll end up with a really nice um, finish. So, that's about it, really. Uh, remember, you can make your own styles, put your own twist on it. I've got two sets here now, so they might not fit back together. Let's get that on there. Okay. So that's our little scroll saw shelf. Make it your own. Put your own spin on it. Um, and you can come up with some really nice designs. These look lovely. Remember to have your little mounting points, uh, whether you just put a screw through here and straight onto the wall, or um, whether you want to, you know, put anything in the back here, um, you know, like a keyhole or something like that, um, to, as, a, as a way of hanging the shelf. Okay. But that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Um, you know, subscribe and like, um, all of those things. We're really trying to push this, um, share with your friends. Um, some really good free content, um, whether it's turning, whether we're using, you know, heavy machinery, there's lots of free content um, for you guys just to, um, you know, to help improve your knowledge. And the same way, you know, 
send in your tips and hints and we can we can learn at the same time. Um, so that's been a woodworking wisdom. We'll see you again soon.